is really an outsourced company. So we become an extension of our customer's business. Um, so, you know, we're very diverse in what we do. Um, so we're doing some stuff for the building industry, um, you know, like ladders that get up into, safety ladders that get up into uh, the roof of a building. Uh, across to then, you know, Kenworth Trucks being our biggest customer, we're building every aspect of the truck. So from small valve panels to the seats, doors, sleeper boxes, uh, the whole front of the truck. Um, and we have about 240 suppliers just for Kenworth alone that we procure product from all around the world and have it arrive here pretty much just in time. Obviously stuff can come in the other side, we have to carry a little bit more stock. So we work closely with all our suppliers. Uh, also, uh, we're a second tier supplier to Bombardia, uh, meaning that we supply to another company, Excel, uh, and we're doing a lot of fiberglass work for them. So a, a product will come to us, a fiberglass panel, uh, we'll router that out, we'll glue on aluminium panels, we'll inspect it for quality when we deliver that as well. And then over the years, we've done a lot of different uh, assembly work from lighting uh, to uh, you know some pipes that were being put through uh, the desert overseas, uh, just miles and miles of piping. We were doing special diodes that were reading the flow current and all that type of stuff. So we can gear up and gear down to do a, a whole heap of different sort of work. There's no real limit to what we can do. Um, it's probably more niche work in the sense that if the volumes were 10,000 a week, it would go overseas, most likely to China, India, somewhere like that. But if the volumes are 100 a week or 50 a week, that's you know would stay in Australia, and the SMK would be uh, aligned perfectly with those type of cars. Again, it's we'll give anything a go. You know, uh, as we were talking about the hydro panel dipping, I've never done that before, but that's a perfect fit, fit for us as well because again, it's a niche market. The quantities are a little smaller than being out, out overseas. So anything that's needs human involvement, someone to put something together, uh, is where we fit in. So there's no limitations to what we can do. Downstairs I have a, a um, food packaging and distribution center as well. So basically I'm buying in uh, you know, nuts and fruits and uh, powders. Uh, you know, I've got sachet machines here. Um, and again, the reason why it's suited to a Senko is because the volumes are too low to go overseas. So anything, it doesn't matter really what it is, we can do. I'm making mud flaps here for our trucks as well. So I'm buying in uh, sheets of uh, like a plastic type of material um, and we're uh, pressing it and then we're screen printing uh, emblems onto that as well. So I don't think there's any real limitation to what we can do. If it's in manufacturing, we can definitely do it. Um, but like I say, food industry we're in, uh, the lighting industry, the trucking industry, the train and tram industry. Hi, my name is Rahul and I started at Assemco back in 2010 as an assembler. I've been working here since then. I've worked at the different roles. So I have uh, actually been worked as a training manager. I've learned all the assemblies here. There's about 120 odd assemblies and I have learned about 110 of those ones. Still learning. And uh, I've recently moved into this production manager role which is about three years ago and I have been enjoying this role since then. This is a, a 50 inch, that's a T, I'll uh, tell you the model number for this one as well. But there's a couple of them in there, so this is a T909, yep. very common model for Kenwood truck yep. and one of the best, I like it, it's spacious and it's uh, pretty good once it's all built at Kenwood, it looks really good when, when it's built. Hi, I'm Marinka. I'm the product development manager for Paco. Um, these are products of one of the customers we do. So we do their shake and take bottles. Um, we've got a bottling machine that puts it in and puts the cap on. We also do individual sachets for them, as well as then put the sachets into the kits um, and boxes, and we send that to their warehouse. Marinka, can you tell me a bit more about what this machine does? Yes, so this is one of our powder filling machines. Um, so what this does is um, we'll put powders into sachets. So there's very varying different, obviously, sizes of sachets. It depends on the serving quantity as to what size packaging. Some of your, most, your more common ones are sort of, you know, your 60 by 110 by 20, 120, sorry, and then your stick figure, your stick sachets, which are a reseal. Um, and they're sort of around the 25 to 110 mm -hmm. by 110 mark. Um, so 
Sachets are actually formed by bag formers, so this machine can do up to 50 grams of product. It's a three-sided seal, which is what that one is. Um, and then we just order the bag former to match the client's, whatever, if you decided you wanted a different size bag, we would just order a bag former if we didn't already have it. We do have about 10 at our instant on hand straight away. Um, and that then is what does the bag, and then we adjust the machine to put the correct dosage in. Right. So everything gets weighed um, once it's gone through to make sure that we've got the dosage going in correctly and it's teared against the, the sachet so it is a net weight.